Okay, welcome to another edition of Lion News. Lion News can be found at lionnews00.blogspot.com. Uh, and today is Sunday, January 30th, 2011. Okay, what are we going to talk about today? Well, we're going to talk about um, how they illegally entered my home on... Uh, on July 20th, 2007, without a warrant, okay? So now you're here from an attorney. Now she's she's uh, an immigration attorney, but she's going ding- to distinguish between the two types of warrants. One is ICE, the Immigration uh, Service, and regular warrants. But she's going to explain first what are the requirements are for a warrant. So here we go. Police only get to enter your home if they have a warrant. So I would re-emphasize what the Ten Rules video says, which is if they say they have a warrant, then you need, to, you need to ask to see it. And if they don't have the warrant, then they don't have permission to enter your home. If they have a warrant, you need to uh, confirm that the warrant was signed by a judge. Um, otherwise, they, they don't reiterate, I reiterate, they don't have permission to enter your home. This is different, though, from an ICE warrant. Um, war- okay, so you can see. They have to have a warrant to enter your home. And the warrant has to be signed by a judge. Okay, remember the problems with this? They showed up my door with a piece of paper claiming to be a warrant. Okay. Should have my name on it. Should have a judge's signature on it. Should have the correct date on it of July 20th, 2007. Okay. But what did they show up with? They showed up with this, remember? A piece of paper that claimed to be a warrant that had no date on it, no signature on it, and was not designated whether it was a Minnesota warrant only or a complete uh, United States warrant. Remember, it was a recommendation for a warrant, okay? But it was dated July 23rd, 2007. Okay, remember in the very first page it said recommendation of supervisor agent and a recommendation of supervising agent and request request for a warrant. See, it wasn't even a warrant, but they claimed it was a warrant. Remember? Okay, here it is, right? Oops. Okay, here's the order of detention. Okay, order of detention is signed by a judge. Okay. Who made out the complaint here? Well, that was Tim Riley, duly licensed peace officer for the state of Minnesota and chief deputy of Pope County. Remember, he claimed that he had a warrant. Where is it right here? Pope County deputies James Ross, James Ross and Forrest Hendrickson accompanied Agent Temper to the lo- to that location whereupon they were greeted by Nemers at the front door. Deputy Ross advised Nemers of the arrest warrant and instructed him to step outside the door. The deputy then attempted to open the screen door, but Nemers pulled the door closed and advised Deputy Ross that the deputy was under arrest for breaking and entering. Okay? Remember, he never he had a piece of paper that claimed to be a warrant but was not signed by a judge. Okay? Remember? No date, no signature. Okay? Plus, did he present the warrant at the time that he went up to the door? No. He did it after he was told not to touch the door, and he opened the door without permission, and I told him he was under arrest for breaking and entry. That's when he claimed that he had a warrant. Okay? But, according to this, it's a sworn statement from... Timmy, Ro- Timmy Riley here. Here it is. Subscribed and sworn before the underside this 24th day of July, 2007. Okay? He said, oh no, it was the other way around. Well, really, if that's the case, Timmy, then where is the warrant then? Remember? The one supposed to be dated July 20th, 2007. No idea where that is. Right? Right, Timmy? Even though 
your little deputies got up on the witness stand and claimed that they had it. Okay. Ross and Hendrickson. Hendrickson, yeah. James Ross and Forrest Hendrickson got on the, on the witness stand and committed perjury. Okay. And then who else did we say was involved with this? Well, Assistant Pope County Chad Larson, who is the current Douglas County attorney. That who who was also involved with it. All right. And who signed all this garbage here? This uh, probable cause statement for order for detention? Well, Judge John Staffschult. John Staffschult on the 24th signed that. Well, don't you think by the 24th you'd have figured out that there was no warrant, John? Huh? Come on, Johnny. Didn't you go to school? Didn't you learn these things? Okay. So let's look at this video here. All right. Now this is going to explain the consequences of someone falsifying a police report. All right. This lady was driving drunk. She, her cat jumped out the window. She stopped the car. She parked it. She put on her, her, uh, her uh, hazard lights. She was looking around for her cat. A cop car rear ends her car. All right. The cops charge her with drunk driving, and with DUI damage, criminal damage, all right? Unfortunately for the cops, one, they, this was all recorded on their own cameras, catching them fabricating evidence against the woman, and two, it's not illegal for you to uh, be drunk. <clears throat> Let's see, the only way you can be charged with drunk driving in Florida is you have to be behind the wheel, which she wasn't, or driving the vehicle, which she wasn't. She was parked, okay? So they completely manufactured this whole thing, all right? Signed an, <clears throat> an arrest for under penalties of perjury. He's going to explain what the damage is right here. It, it, pulling out a joint at a ball game in front of a cop and getting caught. This goes beyond that. The arrest affidavits in criminal cases are sacred. Judges rely upon oh. them. Prosecutors rely upon them. We all read them to determine what the appropriate okay, charge is. Yeah, but what here's the let me say this, this Janet. This is beyond stupid. Janet, let me say this. Let's think about the implications to the victim here, Alexandra uh, Torrance Villas. She would have been convicted of what? DUI, and it was her fault on the accident. That's serious stuff I'm, here. You know, for I'm her. not saying that it's not serious, but look at this. What we're what I'm calling stupid is the fact that you know when people question warrants that are filled with evidence or information that is questionably obtained, that's fairly common. You know, this is a common problem. What's really good about this police department is, and I don't know this police department, is that they have a videotape running inside the camera, and the camera is what caught them, by right. the way. Hey guys, listen, so listen. you got to say, this police officer did something, what was so stupid is that he got caught the way he got caught, and what is happening, what's commonplace, and what this caller what, pin, pin, what they, pigeon guys, let's, is yeah, that it, there's a line jury. that guys, goes on. Let's, let's not do the you're a disservice here. Let's listen to a little bit more. Again, this is the voice of the officers. Uh, this is as the the victim here is sitting in the cop car. Go ahead. Let's listen. We're going to thin this a little bit because okay. he's drunk, so it is what it is. Hey, you see? Well, uh, I mean, I'm not going to... You're the expert. I don't want you to make things up ever. That's right. wrong. But, yeah. but if, I gotta, if I need to bend a little bit to protect the cop, I'm done. I mean, obviously, spin a little to protect a cop. I think what... We don't want to lose faith in law enforcement officers, right? And, and that... No. That we really speaks to, lose to that. Faith in these officers yes. who committed perjury by then taking their manufactured Walt Disney-like story, putting it down in writing, swearing under the penalties of perjury that all that's true, turning it in, and now being relied upon by the court. What they did was perjury. The average yeah, but, citizen but would go to jail to for it, Janet. Guys, Why 15 seconds each. Punishment. What should be the punishment? Janet, but 15 seconds. They are, gonna, they are probably going to lose their jobs. The question is, probably. are they going to lose their pensions? And the answer is, there are a far more difficult crimes okay. committed by public oh, officials Mark, they don't lose seconds. their pensions. Mark, what's they, the should lose their pensions because they're working seconds. people. If Janet lets me talk, i got 15 seconds. Lose job, lose pension, prosecuted for perjury, and if they wanted to seek a little bit of jail time on them for what they did, I'm not going to be out there protesting against okay, them. Okay, guys, spirited uh, conversation there. Quite a, quite a story. Okay. Perjury, you heard it. Lose jobs, lose pension. Lose all sorts of stuff. Lose your freedom. Go to jail. Yeah. Well, see, what happened to old Tommy the Perjurer Larson? 
Well, Tommy the Perjurer Larson, he got his ass booted out of office, didn't he? See? Because all this information got out there. So, what's Timmy Riley all worried about? Well, Sheriff Timmy Riley is worried about the same thing. See? He's worried he's going to lose his job for the exact same reasons. Because he was involved in perjury. Alright? And this one, oh, this one, remember here? Remember how Tom, Tommy Larson, I just clicked it off there, I can't get back, was uh, lying about a phony trespass case? Oh, whose was that? Oh, that's the current county attorney, Neil Nelson. Remember? He got Sheriff Tommy the perjurer Larson and Mary Teresa the perjurer Latola to get up on the witness stands and commit perjury? And why did he do that? Oh, because Judge John Staffshelton and Judge Seibel needed a favor because they were being exposed as corrupt. They were harassing people for using the law library. And they are using the law library to file complaints against them. All right? Now, here's, this is a quote from uh, Prosecution Principles. An attorney who is straight as an arrow in a DUI might become crooked as a corkscrew in a murder case. George R. Deckel, Sr., Prosecution Principles, a, cr a Clinical Handbook, page 30. Oh, well, you know, old Neil Nelson, he became crooked as a, cr a screwdriver, a corkscrew here. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. See, he figured he could make it as the county attorney. <clears throat> well, let's see how long you stay as county attorney there, old Neil. Now, see, look, he's not only is he the Pope County attorney, he's still the Glenwood Sid assistant attorney also. See, the hogs are all eaten out of the same trough there. And see, now look at old Todd G. Roth. Okay, now he's the assistant Pope County attorney. Yeah, and... He serves as assistant city attorney for Glenwood. See? So these hogs have a monopoly on prosecution in Pope County. Not only in Glenwood, but in Pope County itself. See? These guys are as crooked as crooked can be. They're as crooked as a dog's hind leg. All right? So we'll see how long these guys stay in office. Because remember, we got evidence of them involved in malicious prosecution, fabricating evidence. Oh, she's all sorts of stuff. Remember, and if they're involved of suborning perjury, putting perjurers up on the witness stand, boy, I don't know how long they're going to stay in office there. See? So we'll find out how long uh, old Chad Larson's going to stay up in Douglas County, too. See? He's so much of a little bitch, he doesn't even want to put a, a picture up on the Douglas County, excuse me, website. At least Chad, or uh, Chris Carpen had his picture up there. See, this guy is so scared of his picture getting up there because who's going to use it? Oh, I'm going to use it. I'll guarantee you I would use it. All right? Too bad, Chad, I already have your picture. <laughs> so, again, the thing is you need to document these crimes of these corrupt local officials. All right? Doesn't matter how old it is, it can be a, a valuable weapon. A lot of this stuff, like I said, it's two, 2007. Okay? It's still an effective weapon. All right? The perjury, the uh, malicious prosecution by Neil Nelson, jeez, that's in 2009. You know? Still fresh as a daisy here. See? So there's nothing to worry about there. See? All this information. 10, 15, 09. Right there. See? All fresh. All can be a very effective weapon. You can run these guys out of office real quick. All right? Well, thank you for your time.